I'm Jim Lee. I'm a co-publisher of DC Comics. I'm also a comic book artist. And I'm here at Blur Studio, singular, not studios, with uh, Tim Miller, who is the director of the um, six-minute trailer, Who Do You Trust? And uh, we're talking about really sort of the backstory and some of the, the secrets behind the trailer and a lot of the thinking that went into making this really monumental piece. I mean, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here, Tim. It's an honor to be doing this, sitting here and talking to you about the comics that I grew up reading. You know, what's awesome about this whole project is, you know, I mean, it started with Jeff John's uh, sort of plot outline of, of the backstory for the game. And I remember he, he led the, the synopsis with this quote, your future is what you make it. And then he wrote like Lex Luthor. And, and I love that because it made it seem so real. Like, oh, there's a quote from a historic figure. But he really laid out this huge story. And out of all the stuff that, that could, that's part of the backstory, you, you went in and, and picked a sequence that really highlighted the characters and uh, you know really added stuff to it that really wasn't there and I thought it was amazing and how you really took that moment in time and made this epic sort of got a Dameron kind of thing. So what, what inspired you to kind of pick the sequence that you did and, and expand it to the size that you did? Uh, well, I've always been a fan of last stand moments. You know, it's, it's when people are either at their best or at their worst is that, you know, crucible in time and when you're facing death and Jeff's comment there he, he had a, a little piece in the story about the last battle of, of the superheroes and, and they all die. And, and, I'm, and I thought, just as a fan, that's, that's the moment I want to see. I want to see that moment where Luther wins this thing that he's been fighting for his whole entire life right. uh, in the comics. And he finally achieves it. And, you know, does this victory turn to bitter ashes in his mouth or, or is it really like awesome? I, you know, right. I achieved everything I wanted to achieve, but... I wanted to see that moment and just play it out for all the fans like me that always wanted to see what that could be. And then I knew I could undo it because it was a time travel story. Sure. And the whole intro with uh, the so the glowing embers kind of floating, I think it's just so economical to do. <laughs> I thought it was, you know. Totally. And, you know. and, 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 and it, it builds up the suspense of what you're going to see. I mean, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you don't want to, you kind of want to shock people with that first sure. that first view. And you got to lay a lot of backstory to sort of set it up. Uh, I see Green Arrow. Okay, yeah. So I wanted him there. And then, see, there's Poison Ivy uh, right there. Oh, She's yeah. Oh, On the yeah. right hand side with the got arm. Got it, yeah. And it's kind of hidden behind the smoke. I think originally I had uh, Wonder Woman was fighting Solomon Grundy in this first one. And then we thought, because of ESRB issues. Sure. You can get, we can do you a, get robot. a little more, yeah. Because yeah, we like can a battle droid. We can get a little <laughs> more violent. Yeah, so this is uh, Metallo. Oh, also just one more thing on Metallo before. It's kind of hard to see, but she cuts his arm off and then stabs him in the back. And we had quite a debate there with ESRB about saying, no, no, really, it's a robot. And then you see, that this was originally a giant green fist. Right. And it just looked a little silly, so we changed it to ball of lantern energy. And then enter Gigantus. I love the scale of it there, it's awesome. Gigantus was originally killed by Cyborg in the first script, but then I thought, well, I'll, I need to introduce Green Lantern and Black Adam in their battle, so why not give it to Green Lantern? And then we get our first look at Batman. And I wanted to do Batman as sort of the general on the battlefield, and that was his, his whole thing. Everybody loves to see Batman fight, but, but he's also this master strategist, so I thought you know, it would make sense for him to be in charge of the battle, not Superman. So there are the remnants of the Daily Planet. Lex is actually fighting on top of the Daily Planet building. I'm not sure if people pick it up. That twisted metal behind him is actually the, the globe from the Daily Planet. I like the idea of, of Deathstroke just... Uh, He's just like walking around. The stakes are higher. These guys, you know, it is the last battle and everything. But for Deathstroke, this is what he's used to. And then I wanted to finish the fight with Metallo. Originally, we didn't do that, but, but I wanted to show off how powerful Wonder Woman is. I just realized she, she pulls the sword out of his back to cut off his own head. Harley Quinn holding on to his coattails. I, I, and that yeah. counterbalance is awesome. And then that's Robin's cape that she's wearing. Yeah, it's Robin's yeah. cape. Now that's some fancy running. This moment was one where I envisioned something a little bit more than we were able to get. I actually wanted to see the lasers sort of frozen in time. We wanted to give Green Lantern his moment. Like, what would he do if he was wounded? And so we had him bind his wounds and like his arm was broken and he was kind of holding it together with lantern energy. Just loved how uh... Destro sort of skid along the ground as he falls. Little subtle things like that really sell a sense that it's actually physically happening.
My whole idea with him was he's got to be clever because she's so much more powerful. I, I love how the shield is actually uh, segmented. It's not just like this big disc. I mean, one of the fans said online, why does he do it three times? Does he figure out that it doesn't work the first time? Why does he <laughs> right. keep doing it? You know? When things are happening this fast, it's it, you do the thing that. Yeah, you know, well, that was kind of what I was going for. He's desperately just, just he's trying, just to, trying get to get this hang guy yeah, off. Hang on, yeah. right. I wanted the idea that he's basically containing all the, the lantern energy and right. he's breaking his arm. And so I thought if he could cause him enough pain, maybe he can't concentrate to, to, to fend him off. And then my you know, homage to Kingdom Come with uh, Shazam creating this huge explosion. The idea of a, a power ring kind of cracked like that. Does Batman survive this? It would have been cool to have a bigger fight with him in Deathstroke because I think in many ways they're evenly matched. The other thing that I thought made this moment believable, his right arm is broken. Ah. If you notice, it's like hanging limp as he stands up. And then here he, he never uses it, it's always right. dangling. And then here he can't even move right. it. So what's on Joker's uh, chest? Is that, I, I'm with stupid yeah. button. I like the idea of a Joker that's a little a little more serious about his mayhem. You know, he's got a flak jacket on. He's got he's got some serious weapons here. There, it's hard to see where uh, where the rocket comes in, but you can actually see Batman hanging back there in the background. And Cersei is a secondary read too, because sure. she's she's dead uh, on the right hand side. And then Lex comes in and, and gets Wonder Woman. I, th I think this is the first time I've seen him in this armor actually look really badass and, you know, and, and it looks believable. From all the noise in the universe, he hears her scream. And through the yeah. silence, the vacuum of space. The vacuum of space. That's, <laughs> that's, right. how, that's how powerful Superman is. And of course, when he hears it, that's the thing that calls him to action. This is a nice sequence actually to kind of do frame by frame because as he was coming in, I was like, as you see the contrail behind, which is what I was talking about before. And it almost looks like he's flying sideways at this point, right? He is. And when he hits, you see all the rubble fly past him and then you see his cape kind of fly and then kind of, and he's hovering. I, I thought it was just really cool. And this flash of green light is, uh, is for Jeff because he knew that Luther couldn't survive a straight shot sure. from Superman, so we wanted to suggest that his shields were still you know, there to kind of blunt the initial impact of Superman coming down. There was that great shot by Alex Ross where he, his red eyes are, are coming out, and all you see is the steam in the eyes as he's coming out, and he is pissed. I originally had Black Adam die, and then when you and Jeff came down, you said, we need uh, a little more action for Superman, and we put this Black Adam sequence in because I needed somebody that could go toe to toe with sure. him. Sure. No, it's just, um, it's great to see him actually in some sort of melee thing because he's always usually just picking up heavy things and drop, you know, like kind of gently yeah. dropping them to earth. You really highlighted how difficult Superman would be to defeat in battle. I mean, just from the, from the distance he closes when he goes from Black Adam to Luther, it's just like instantaneous. And there's just no way any, any guy in a robot suit would be able to react to that. And it's just, He's helpless before that kind of that kind of uh, unless you have fury. Some, unless really. you have some tricks up your sleeve. I realize there's some logistical problems with her mouth being stuffed full of kryptonite, and would he sense that? But I just thought the moment was. No, I, I don't think I've seen anything like that before. Superman would be, you know, ready for his tricks, but I, I didn't think he'd be ready for this. And again, it's it's using his obvious connection and, and caring for Wonder Woman to kind of seal his own, his own doom, doom yeah. absolutely. But of course, it was all according to Lex's plans. I really wished I could have milked this moment a little bit more, or the dead Superman, you know, you want to push in on a close-up. Sure. or. But then I thought, as much as I would like to do that from a fan's perspective, from a story point, this is really Lex's moment. Over this cross-dissolve to the, to the future Lex, so right. here we changed him again, and you know, the, he's still got the wounds, but now they've been enhanced, his armor has been uh, kind of patched with stolen technology from, from Brainiac. Again, you know, from Jeff's original backstory where Luther had spent years living inside the Brainiac's ship and kind of hiding from them, and he was the last man left alive. The challenge with this long shot here, I try and show Luther as both the penitent and humble because he realizes he's made all these mistakes, but he's also arrogant still and try and find that balance between arrogance and I have to fix a mistake I made. 
And that leads into the game. It's uh, it's yeah. it's the genesis of of all these superheroes and supervillains towards this master plan that uh, lets us hatch here. Sony.